I want us to listen again to this. I want us to just listen to Nigerian journalists, what they have found, what they are saying. Let us, let's just pay attention to this. Let's listen. A recent study by StatiSense revealed data about the League of Prey Nations, which showed that 95% of Nigerians say that they pray daily. We are the second highest in the world, by the way, after Afghanistan. Well, let's take a look at the statistics of the top nine uh, countries of those who pray daily. Let's look at that. Here, look at that. <laughs> Number one is Afghanistan. Number two is Nigeria, 95%. Then we have Algeria at 8%, Senegal at 88%, uh, Djibouti at 87 Iran 87 Iraq 87 Niger, 87 Indonesia. Then bottom nine, which is uh, China at number. China, China, I don't care about. Can we pull up the other graph? Because I want to do another type of uh, comparison. This one is uh, prayer versus terrorism. Again, Afghanistan, top that list. And then uh, there's another uh, chart, if you can pull that up. Prayer versus corruption. Right. Again, Nigeria is number two. I mean, what does this say about our nation? Uh, Kayo, there really There's a lot of issues there, and it boils down to the fact that prayer alone is not the answer or solution. It is not the fault of churches. It is not the fault of anybody. If you fail to do the right thing, morals is more important. It is good to pray, but you can't just say that all you want to do is just pray, pray, pray. Now, uh, this horrible analysis by Nigerian journalists concerning Christians uh, uh, mocking even prayers is very horrible. Very horrible. I want, I want you to listen to it again. A recent study by StatiSense revealed data about the League of Pray Nations, which showed that 95% of Nigerians say that they pray daily. We are the second highest in the world, by the way, after Afghanistan. Well, let's take a look at the statistics of the top nine uh, countries of those who pray daily. Let's look at that. Here, look at that. <laughs> Number one is Afghanistan. Number two is Nigeria, ninety-five percent. Then we have Nigeria, ninety-five. Eight percent. Senegal at eighty-eight percent. Djibouti at eighty-seven. Iran, eighty-seven. Iraq, eighty-seven. Niger, eighty-seven. Indonesia. Then bottom nine, which is uh, countries who never play. Only one percent of Chinese play. Can we pull up the other graph because I want to do another type of uh, comparison. UK six percent pray. Prayer versus terrorism again. Afghanistan number one, number two Nigeria. Another chart if you can pull that up. Prayer versus corruption rank again. Nigeria is number two. I mean, what does this say about our nation? Uh, There's a lot of issues there, and it boils down to the fact that prayer alone is not there. Now. The, the, what the journalists are saying is a shame. Look as if they are mocking even our God. So when we get a lot of poor people, we get a lot of sick people, we get a lot of people who cannot feed themselves and their families together in churches to come and pray. Come for all night prayers fast for 100 days and the result is what we are seeing here then we should look at ourselves as dangerous people that's what we look at ourselves how can you gather people and teach them to pray every day fast every day because God will attend to them. They are poor. They are sick. They can't feed their family. The nation has become so corrupt. The nation has been so terrorized. They are bandits, terrorists, armed robbers, everywhere. 
The people are afraid. They need God. The country is having high inflation rates. There is no money in the system. People work and all what they earn at the month cannot buy one bag of rice. What they work for the whole month, the accommodation has not come. They are transportation, school fees, what their wife will use to buy what to wear has not come. The whole salary can buy only one bag of rice, 50 kilo, kg of rice. Somebody is earning 35,000 Naira in a month and one 50 kg of rice, one bag, 50 kg of rice is around 45,000 Naira and the salary is 35,000 Naira. That is the picture of the people we are talking about. And the pastors have called them into the church. We need God because only God can solve this situation for us. And that is true. And they pray every day. They fast every day. They are in all night, every weekend. 70 days fasting and prayer, 100 days fasting and prayer. Only to see their situation second to Afghanistan. And there are so many pastors in that nation, pack in that nation, are prophets, general overseers, that is Jews, bishops, more than any country on earth. Churches, every few meter there's a church. Every player, everywhere, noise everywhere. Churches, buildings, is raised everywhere. Mighty church buildings, mega churches, where millions and millions of people gathered. Top 10 richest men of God are found there. But the results of all that is what we are seeing. That's very pity. That's very sad. But the Lord Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him for he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. Those who cannot feed themselves, who cannot feed their family, who is so afflicted that when they even work all their life, their monthly salary cannot buy them even food for their children. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed him to preach to them. Matthew chapter 11 verse 5 He said the poor has the gospel preached to them. He said that's Luke chapter 4 verse 18 The Spirit has sent him to comfort the broken hearted people whose hearts are broken because of the afflictions they are going through because of the pains and the suffering the Spirit of God sent him to come and comfort them with this word. The Spirit of the Lord sent him to preach deliverance of these captives who have no power to deliver themselves. So the Spirit of the Lord sent him to them to re bring recovery of sight to them to bring recovery of sight to them, 
to heal those of them who are bruised. How is it somebody who is sick and going to a needed medical attention? Since he's in the flesh, his flesh may have some problem and he may need medical attention, dressing, medical dressing for wound or anything can happen to the person and may need medical attention. He doesn't even have money to buy one bag of rice. His own salary, whole salary cannot buy that rice, cannot buy even that rice. How is he going to get money for his children's medical bills? But Jesus is saying that the Spirit of God sent him to come and heal these people by the gospel. And Apostle Paul is saying in Romans 1 verse 16 that the gospel is the power of God that does those things. Paul asked the question in Galatians 3 verse 2. I would like to learn this from you. Do you receive the Spirit? What it means is that Jesus said, the Spirit has sent me to preach the gospel to you. Now Paul is saying, do you receive the Spirit? Who sent Jesus? You see, to receive somebody is to receive what the person is saying. The person has sent to you. So if you receive the person, it means you have received the message. If you reject the message, it means you have rejected the person. Now, Paul is saying that you receive the Spirit through the West of the law or by healing. Of course, if you receive, somebody has come to you that Mr. Susan and so has sent me with this message to you. If you say thank you for the message, it means you have received the person. So Paul question to the Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 3. Galatians chapter 1, from verse 6, he said, he's marveling that they've moved away from the gospel which they had into another gospel. Some people are preaching other gospel which is not the gospel which the Spirit sent by Jesus. Galatians 1 verse 6. So Galatians 3 verse 2, he's asking them, do you receive the Spirit through the words of the law or by hearing of faith? It means that there are some, some people have come and add the works of the law to the message. They've asked, added those Old Testament practices to the message which the Spirit sent by Jesus Christ. So his question to them in Galatians 3 2, do you receive the Spirit through the works of the law or by hearing the faith in the gospel which is sent by Jesus Christ? Verse 5, Galatians 3. He therefore that ministered to the Spirit. Jesus who came to minister what the Spirit has sent him to come and tell you. And working miracles among you. Demonstrating the power of God in, among you so you get out from those problems. Get out from the poverty, the broken hearted, the captivity. Get out from the blindness. Get out from the bruises. Is it by the works of the law or by hearing of it? This Paul was, an, was a Pharisee before. Before he became an apostle of Jesus Christ. And that was his questions to the people. Whether the gospel is about the works of the law or by, by believing in the gospel. Was the gospel also preaching the works of the law? Jesus said, 
Luke chapter 4, verse 19. He said he was trying to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, that God accepts you, no matter who you are. So God was not asking the people to do something to qualify. He said, it is time for them to get up because no matter who they are, God now wants to deliver them. So it's not about how good they are or how trying they are pushing forward to, to just find a soul before God to cause God to accept them. No. Jesus said, I've come. The Spirit has sent me to you to do it poor, too broken hearted, to you who are captive, to you who are bruised, who are blind. The Spirit has sent me to you to declare this unto you. He didn't say that the Spirit said, unless you do this, you will not get this. He said, this is what the Spirit is telling me to tell you. So Paul's question to these people is that, how do you receive the Spirit? How do you receive the message from Him? You see, because the Spirit was asking you to finish this, to bring this, to fulfill this before He can change your life. Was it that He was saying? This was a question that Apostle Paul was asking. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, Peter also said there are some false teachers and false prophets who are making merchandise of the people, selling the word of God, selling blessings of God for tithes. Pay your tithes, so you bring seed. Give me first fruit before God will do this for you. Come and touch me with your money. Bring your credit card. Peter said, these are false teachers, false prophets, who are making merchandise of the people. John also said, Apostle John, 1 John 4, verse 1, he also said, Don't believe every spirit, because false prophet has gone into the world. And these are antichrist spirits. Before Jesus left, he told the apostles and caused Matthew to write down and said, Many false prophets will arise and shall deceive many. And this gospel shall be preached the nations before the end will come as a witness. For many false prophets and false Christ will arise and shall deceive many show great signs and great wonders that if even it is possible they will deceive the very elect behold i've warned you tell them i've told you before so if they tell you that they are having miracle crusade here they are having holy ghost convention they are having prophetic anointing service here don't go there Matthew chapter 24, verse 11, verse 14, verse 24 to 26. Matthew chapter 24, verse 11 and verse 14, then verse 24 to 26. Why don't you go there? Why shouldn't you go there? Because it is the message you receive. And the message is written down. Nobody is preaching any other new gospel. There is no new gospel. Jesus said, Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel, which means the gospel which was preached at that time, this same gospel, everything is written now. So nobody has any new gospel for you. So why are you going there? For what? And it's not their miracles. It's not their miracles. It is the gospel, the power, what the power of the gospel will manifest in you that matters. The poor has the gospel preached to them. The poor are not asked to give money. They don't have money. Why should God ask somebody who doesn't have money? Why should God ask a poor person to give him money before he bless him? 
why are people making God look so evil and so bad? And what are the results? The people are rather going down the drain instead of what God wants them to become. But you, you are the target. So it's you who is supposed to understand these things so that you will not go down the drain. You will not be destroyed by them. Because the situation is pity. It's very sad. Let God help you. They cannot help you. No man can help you. All what they want you to do is to come to their churches and give the money which you don't have. And at the end, they will treat you as a rubbish. Because these people are not from God. Apostle Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 to 4, and verse 13 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 to 4, and verse 13 to 15. He said, People have come to preach another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, which they have not preached. And these are false apostles who have turned themselves into apostles of Christ. For it's no marvel, for Satan himself has become the angel of light. So it's no marvelous thing when they are, it's not so marvel. We shouldn't marvel when even they are his workers has also become as apostle of Christ and mention the name of Jesus. But know that the Spirit has sent to you a message to believe in Jesus, a message to believe that he cares for you. God is not saying that he doesn't want you to have money. He doesn't want you to prosper. He said, seek first his spiritual blessings and spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Gift of salvation. Gift of eternal life. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Salvation is a gift. Romans 6 23. Eternal life is a gift. There's also spiritual gifts. The word of wisdom, word of knowledge, knowledge of God, wisdom of God, which is higher than that of human beings, faiths, gifts of healing, gift of miracles, gifts of prophecy, gifts of tongues, interpretations, gifts of discerning, discerning spiritual things, discerning things of God. They are gifts. First Corinthians chapter 12. From verse 4 downwards. Then we have the spiritual blessings. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 3, which are the blessing of the kingdom of God, the blessing of your righteousness. Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added because everything which any human being on earth is seeking. Your father knows that you also need them. So when you pray, don't even talk, talk too much. For your father knows the things you need. Matthew chapter 6 verse 8, verse 32 to 33. Matthew chapter 6 verse 8, verse 32 to 33. So God is not saying that he doesn't know that you need money. He doesn't want you to have money. Have nice houses, good life. And whatever you want on earth. He said everything which the nations, the unbelievers in the nations are seeking. Your father knows that you also need them. But the spiritual blessings, the spiritual gifts must be first. Because the reason why you have problems, the reason why you can't overcome the world is because you have been oppressed. You are being oppressed by spirits. And when you get the power in the spirit, you will cast them away. So first, in the name of Jesus, 
by receiving the gospel, you will recast those devils from your life. And stand against the serpents, the demon forces. When they poison you, you will not die. And you will become a restorer to the nations. That was why he sent the apostles to go and preach the gospel. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. As I said before, that those who receive the gospel, they will repair nations, build back cities. As I said, 1 verse 4 to 7. That's what the gospel can do for you. So don't let people deceive you. May God give you understanding. Amen.